Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm glad you didn't get frozen. Um, yes, oh, yes. Uh, yes. My name is Anna Ulrichova. I'm very happy to uh, meet you all. And I will present you our... Yeah. Our... Uh, Tourism hospital. You will have to speak a bit louder. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is our team, um, and it's just me present today. So let's let's move on. Uh, as, the, as for the background, uh, we all know about the AI and ChatGPTs and, and open AI and its role uh, and fast pace to developing the task track. What I was uh, really um, captured by this uh, statement by the uh, uh stating that while medieval society was captivated by mythical a semi-human being, such as mermaids, the modern society is increasingly captivated by computer uh, semi-human beings like Chet, like Chet GPT, and um, blurring the boundaries between what is authentically and artificially human. So this is what really um, caught my attention. Uh, here is the general background. Uh, as for the AI in tourism, uh, also, of course, there is uh, there are a lot of areas in which it is progressing. Uh, most of all, the number one, the authors agree that it is the enhancement of services in deli and delivering services to the customers. Yeah, uh, there are many concerns arising from this, uh, not only on the education field, but also um, education and in the academic, academic uh, sphere, but especially in the role of traditional human interventions, especially in these sectors, because it's a sector which actually is based on the human interventions. People, when they are traveling, they want to meet other people, they want to talk to people, to see their tradition, their habits, to hear them speaking their own language, and to get the overall experience. So uh, not that much is known yet about the effect and the impression of AI and AI generation uh, generated text and product on the final customer, on that very traveler, on that customer in the restaurant, in, in a hotel or at the reception. So how do customers actually um, uh, take all that? So that's the aim of the study. It is to explore the attitudes of tourism, hospitality, and gastronomic customers towards AI-generated uh, content. And um, it is an explorative uh, study with uh, explorative, uh, explorative complete goal. And we had three model scenarios. One of them was uh, at the tourism information center. Maybe you will get a chance to see it. It was at the Prague Castle. Uh, the other one was at the hotel, at the four-star hotel at the reception desk. And the third scenario was happening uh, in a restaurant, like a four-star restaurant. So we have decided for a qualitative method uh, research methodology. We used text elicitation uh, during the semi-standardized interviews with our agents, which had to be uh, a regular participants in uh, tourism and hospitality industry. Um, we have created three scenarios or three inputs for the chat GPT, which created three texts according to the, each situation given. And um, after that, all the, all the um, uh, answers were coded and you will see the result in a second. And also on top of that, we created a schematic presentation of ideal types of that um, agents uh, based uh, on the, their perception of AI generated content. So the total number of agents was 15, but since we were not um, aiming for uh, a generalizable um, statements, that was purely explorative uh, study. So that was 15 enough. 
uh, they were there were men and women uh, included in the uh, and actually uh, skipping the generation alpha. So most of the generations were actually involved as well. Uh, the median of uh, the age is 40 years. Uh, we were pretending that, um, that of course, the text was uh, created by a real person. So it was like a little bit tricky for all the uh, all the agents, which they didn't know that it was actually created by a. But in fact, we just gave them the text, uh, not telling them that it was uh, AI and uh, not reading it out to them because we didn't want to influence their impression. Um, so there was, this is the first situation described. So it was like a tourist uh, uh, at the tourist information center at the Prank Castle asking all the information, like requesting the information um, specifically Oh, what are the possibilities for visiting Prague Castle? Oh, what are the most important things the Prague uh, they should see and and visit? And here's the text, the AI. This is actually the first uh, the first text that it actually came out. Uh, yeah, so we took the very the very first one, and this long answer came out. Uh, this is actually one of the negative uh, later on negative reactions. Of the agents that it was too long and too you know too like a fairy tale pretty much, pretty much like that not a human is talking about that. Uh, situation B was happening uh, at the reception of a five-star hotel and uh, the customer was requesting uh, breakfast when breakfast is served uh, what about the ticket for the public transport and uh, the hotel wellness center at the opening hours, if it uh, if there is a fee being to pay or not. Uh, here, the the agents were um, actually surprised that, of course, the AI didn't know what town it is for, so uh, it couldn't really get the price for the tickets. So it only said like you can ask at the reception for the price of the tickets. <laughs> So our agents were like, well, I just asked, but so why is it telling me to ask again? So this was suspicious to them. They didn't came up, come up with the idea that it was created by AI, but still there was something like feeling strange to them. And this is the scenario that it's coming out. Like, the public transportation is convenient, easily accessible, etc., cetera, et cetera. But these are all the stuff that you don't want to hear. You just want to know, I can buy it here, or there is a machine where you can buy it. Or... And the situation three was in a restaurant, in a luxury restaurant. Um, the waiter kind of was asked by the agent uh, for the recommendation of uh, uh, courses matching and wine pairing and, and things like that. Uh, and this is the answer that is very long, very, very, very tailored. So these are the steps and we took. The agent was already presented uh, uh, on the situation, like was the situation. In the next step, uh, they uh, read the text. Yeah. Um, the next step, we asked them some questions, and uh, after that, we uh, there was the um, experimental intervention where we actually revealed that it was AI and, and how do they feel about it. So these are the answers, how it affected them, how they are satisfied, how did the employee uh, actually affect them from the human perspective. Uh, on purpose, we asked on the, on the feeling of the human perspective and whether they see any shortcomings. And after the intervention, it was um, how did it did affect them, if they could actually see any shortcomings now, knowing that it was AI. And so um, the, after the coding, the answers were uh, positive, negative, uh, and some of them were neutral, but that was the least of them. And uh, yeah, here you can see some uh, uh, Positive statements. The person is as a person. He is definitely nice, friendly. Uh, the kind of person who likes to help and doesn't need to. So yeah, as for the negative, to me it seems like a machine response. I don't know why. You know, so they already some of them did have a suspicion. It's like it is. 
it's kind of let's say in terms of uh, kind of machine learning. You know, so some of them they did have. Um, yes, uh, here is the last technology of there were some AI assessors, um, some AI uh, reviewers, and AI collectors somewhere uh, in between. And as for the inclusion, uh, conclusion, so uh, we could say uh, from this, our exploratory study, that uh, still, although AI is very successful and very pregnant in uh, some areas of our life, in tourism and hospitality, it's it's uh, still less successful as when it comes to the human, human touch and human intervention. Um, yes, we are planning to do some more uh, studies. Thank you for your attention. Uh, Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Do we have any questions? About yeah, I'll be happy to, to answer if I know. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So, congratulations. I love your presentation, but I love your topic. It's very topical, for sure. Um, maybe one uh, one comment, of course, is the exploratory. Mm -hmm. But um, if you, why not to try to expand for the negativity? Okay, this um, maybe can be one question is about the negativity that will be of my topic. Mm -hmm. Not about GPT. Mm -hmm. There is negativity regarding the, the chat GPT, which is a feeling mm -hmm. that can generate maybe. But I love you. Okay, yes, we have another question. Right. Yes. Thank you so much for your presentation. And you got my attention right from the beginning when you referred to mermaids. Uh, it was a very interesting connection, like mermaids, chatbots today. And um, I was wondering, um, how come did you come up with, the, with this idea of connecting what happened in the medieval ages and what is happening now with, with chatbots? Because from it's kind of difficult to connect them, but maybe uh, you show me a different perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was, um, well, from my point of view, that was during the literature review, I came across this, this, this topic and this article. And I thought that really, that is very much true. These days, everyone, you know, is really like most of the people, the population, captured by really like mobile phones, cell phones, AI, okay. and all this artificial intelligence. People are fascinated by robots, you know, and robotic and everything like that is like moving in, you know, Siri, you just say something out loud and it is answering to you. You have smart houses, smart uh, vehicles and things. But in the, it was not always like this, obviously. And, but uh, at every age, at every time of, of people's evolution, human always had something that they actually, you know, draw uh, their attention to. And that felt to me like the mermaids in the media. Anyway, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Any other questions? No, thank you very much. 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 Uh, the task and presented by Alindia. So, <laughs> thank you. The topic is negative impacts of human and AI interaction in brands without glasses. In brands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Well, uh, can I, I only ask uh, which the presentation is yours? Oui. Which okay. presentation okay. is yours? Uh, I don't know. 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 I because it misses one of them. You can put this pen. Okay. Uh, 
I can go. I can connect. This one? Uh, directly. Ora, qual, qual delas é que é? The IC Mark Tech Human the... AI Interaction. Human. Acho que é a quarta aí. Não, a quarta para o Ricardo. Human Interaction. This one. Ah, I can call the IT maybe and try to figure it out. This is a presentation, sorry. So if we have problems, we can we switch and present another presentation? Yes. We will fix the presentation by the Skype. Will it be okay? Can I, can I connect directly? Uh, no. Actually, no. I don't think so, but I can try to call the IT. Expert. Okay. Okay. I don't mind presenting if you'd like. Because I have okay. the third floor. I have the No, I have the third one. one. We have this one. Here we have. Um, no, you have no, 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 no. I think that I, I know which is the problem. It's the care code. Yeah. So I'll just talk to all of the next presentation. And I said, I think it's very easy for me. I connect directly. It's very easy. Or yes, but the problem is with yeah. the Zoom, not the switch ah, okay. cables. Yeah. Okay. okay, it's not possible if she log in. But then you gave a call. Yeah, but this yeah. this costs us minutes. That's why. Uh, um, okay, so yeah, I just suggest to move on with the other quick guys in the picture than mine. Yeah, but that's fine. Yeah. Uh, and I will give you this email and you will send it to them. I will just write it down. And this one. On virtual reality, um, exploring virtual reality in an omni-channel marketing strategy is my first scientific paper. In this presentation, I'll go over these topics. Uh, my research institution, VR State of the Art, digital and omni-channel marketing, uh, my systematic review, and I'll have some conclusions. Um, my uh, research center is called the Interdisciplinary Studies Research Center, which is based in ZEP and is funded by FCT. Um, my work will be added to a larger um, 
a study called King and Kai, which is currently studying how we can um, integrate um, digital marketing with multimodal um, artificial intelligence. Uh, as a first problem, uh, the ISRC presented to me was to uh, research uh, about VR in an omni-channel uh, marketing strategy. And for this, I had these objectives, learning more about VR, defining the terminology, exploring uh, different VR uses, uh, my systematic review uh, with a question how VR will impact uh, omni-channel marketing, and finally, my scientific paper. Um, so, starting with uh, in the state of the art with virtual reality, um, virtual reality can be defined as a virtual immersive environment that makes the users feel like they're somewhere they're not. They use um, VR equipment for this and the environment must mimic uh, real life. Um, it, it generally does this uh, with sensory equipment that provides audio, visual, and sometimes even tactile stimuli. Um, in 2022, uh, the VR market size was valued at 28 billion, and it's expected to have a compound annual growth rate of 13.8% from 2023 to 2030. Um, some applications of VR in science include post VR, which allows surgeons to practice um, surgeries in virtual reality from very mundane everyday things to things that only happen once in a lifetime. Another interesting use case is a 3D CAD program that allows uh, engineers to build complex manufacturing systems. And this is showing a lot of promise. Uh, some uh, applications in marketing. We have Thomas Cook Airlines, which had a campaign called Try Before You Fly. Uh, and this allowed customers to experience uh, VR, uh, the, both the onboard uh, flight experience and various um, tourist spots all over New York. And this had a result of an increase of 190% in trips to New York. Adidas uh, challenged their users to try mountain climbing on, uh, on VR to try and get more people interested in the sport. I don't have time for this one. And there are also many companies that have uh, showrooms um, uh, where users can customize and interact with uh, vehicles they might be interested in purchase, purchasing. Um, moving on to digital and omnichannel marketing. Digital uh, omnichannel marketing is the, um, the cooperation between various different channels that the company uh, may use uh, with the objective of improving uh, the overall quality of the service provided in all channels and securing um, a certain equity. While uh, digital marketing is uh, the integration between uh, digital and digital technology, making a seamless experience. A good example is the Amazon Go stores. People have the opportunity to uh, scan their car, their credit cards before entering the store, or simply having the, the Amazon phone app installed, and they can just go into the store, pick up anything from the shelf, and leave without being uh, needing to see a cashier. This is because uh, they use sensory technology mixed with AI in order to enable automatic billing. And now let's talk about the metaverse. The metaverse is a term that was popularized uh, by Neil Stephenson in 1992 with his science fiction novel called uh, Snow, uh, Snow Crash. Um, the, uh, the metaverse is a virtual world parallel to our own, where people have the opportunity to interact with it through avatars. These avatars are the virtual embodiment of the users in the virtual world. Uh, for the purposes of my paper, um, consider the metaverse uh, a fully functioning, uh, a fully immersive parallel reality that blends the physical, digital, and human roles. Your users can experience an alternative life through the use of avatars, being able to work, socialize, study, play video games, explore, and more. Um, here are some VR equipment, the most basic of which is the VR headsets. Some people also like to use treadmills, which enable them to run 
in the metaverse in all directions without having to fear going in against an object in the virtual world. Also, there are haptic gloves, which uh, give tactile uh, stimuli. Uh, there's also some VR equipment for arcades and VR theme parks. I put here two examples, VR roller coaster and racing, but there are many more examples. Now, getting into my systematic review, it was made using Prisma. Um, our research question was, how will virtual reality impact omnichannel marketing? Our concept is omnichannel marketing, the population retail. The context is virtual reality and the limitations were papers between 2017 and 2022. Two databases were used in order to make this uh, systematic review. And uh, after the screening process, we were left with five papers uh, that were included in the systematic review. Um, these are the topics I go over in my scientific paper, starting with how VR is currently being used in retail. Um, so currently VR holds a few kinds of new experiences because um, companies have been building a baseline with creating what already exists in the real world, in the virtual world. And from here, they can now improve and introduce uh, new concepts. Uh, I also talk about uh, an example of, of two, two VR uh, shopping malls, one in the UK and one in the United Arab States. Um, that's uh, where 700 questionnaires were handed over in each uh, shopping mall um, to people between the ages of 23 and 38. And we can see here the results. Um, uh, what interests us is here virtual reality. So 14% of people have shopped in virtual reality plus 16% have shopped in all of the above. So 30% in the UK and 37% in the United Arab States. Um, marketing in the metaverse. So the metaverse is a data gold mine. Uh, here companies have the opportunity to Capture, uh, to gather data instead of having users filling a form. They achieve this by having uh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so uh, they achieve this by um, uh, for example, having uh, AI representatives it's expected to have uh, AI agents will become um, omnipresent in the metaverse and substitute influencers. This is because um, AI can learn from each interaction with it, with the user and get to know the users personally. And with it gather data, for example, by analyzing the user's tone of voice, their facial expressions that they're enjoying the, um, the overall interaction. Okay. Sorry. Um, no, 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 no. Other interesting use cases include digital billboards in the meta in the metaverse, which uh, show targeted ads for each user based on the previously gathered data. Um, you also have the experience to have a virtual test drive before trying the car personally, or having a virtual tour of a house that might be located very far away. And simple ideas have been working out very well. Uh, Nike uh, was able to make a lot of a lot of in revenue from simply selling virtual uh, sneakers. This was done by using NFTs, non fungible tokens, which are unique artifacts that use blockchain technology, and these uh, can be used to secure uh, entrances to events and. Uh, to, they could even be used to trade virtual products for uh, products, uh, physical products, blurring the lines between the physical and the digital world. Other other things I go over are uh, consumer well-being and trust, and this uh, this depends a lot on the kind of views a person gives to in the metaverse. If a person uh, stops having physical activity. Uh, in order to be in the metaverse, um, this can become detrimental. Policy implications. It is very important, it will be crucial to have uh, good policy implications since 
companies will have access to so much data. It's important to know um, who owns this data, where it's stored, um, and how it should be used. Also, uh, there's a case for fair use because the metaverse requires a lot of hardware and only big companies have been able to invest in it uh, so far. So a way to uh, level the playing field for smaller companies would be important to find. And now the metaverse has a lot of potential, but there are also many challenges. Uh, for example, it, since it uses so many technologies, uh, it is feared that maybe there won't be enough professionals for every company, and there may be a lack of empl uh, employees. Um, also, most studies only focus on visual and audio um, uh, stimulation in, and more uh, other sens sensory technologies should be explored. Uh, it's also necessary to find the key performance indicators and since the baseline has been built, we can finally start to venture in what, into what the metaverse can become. So, conclusions. Uh, answering my scientific question, how will VR impact omnichannel marketing? It will create unique and innovative ways to interact with customers, gather high quality data from each interaction, and require a lot of skilled individuals, give, uh, giving rise to many different jobs. I was able to conclude all of the objectives I proposed myself to. And thank you for listening. Hope you enjoy. Comment. <laughs> 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 Excellent. Excellent. So excellent. Uh, you are uh, Rogerio? Rogerio, yes. Rogerio. So congratulations for your first uh, uh, presentation and for first article. It's very nice. And uh, we encourage you to succeed in many more, of course. Uh, it's a very beautiful um, way to go. And um, uh, I wanted to, to ask uh, regarding the, the general review that uh, you did. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I saw that um, you showed some of the let's say the, the big brands that maybe use virtual reality and so on, mm -hmm. uh, what will be the, the further step to do? Because uh, uh, this is a very big subject. So you said you are limited uh, in, uh, at 2017, 2022. 22. This is not quite the limitation. I mean, this is it. I don't know if you have any more, but it, what do you plan for the next uh, future? So, so uh, in the future, uh, currently, um, uh, we purchase a VR headset, and now we're going to explore what kind of applications exist in virtual reality. We're going to analyze them, and we're going to make recommendations on how to improve and maybe try to come up with uh, uh, ideas of what could be interesting to use. And this is right now the further step. There are also colleagues of mine who are exploring um, how emotions could be further analyzed in the metaverse because we have the opportunity to capture a lot of different data in the metaverse but which data is the one that is fundamental for us to be able to take better decisions in marketing this is the question uh so filtering that data and getting the key performance thank you good luck yeah thank you very much uh, okay um Jay, um Congratulations. Just a, a couple of suggestions. Uh, very good your presentation, by the way, but uh, a couple of suggestions. First of all, uh, try to put numbers on, on your slides. Oops. And the second, uh, um, you, it's, it's good to present yourself and your institution because uh, the Portuguese, we know what, 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 what the ISEP is, but the other people don't know. <laughs> It was nice to, to present your institution. Uh, the bad. first time I did the presentation, I, uh, so I counted how long I did the presentation. It, it took 30 minutes. Okay. I had to cut a lot of information. Okay. Nice. But so thank you. Yeah, really well done. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, it's my turn. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so, so.
Guys, exactly. so I'm very positive, but the presentation topic will be the negative one. <laughs> okay? I'm starting to count your five. No, no, not yes. yet. Yes. <laughs> you are joking. Okay? In the one? Yes. yes. Go, oh, Amelia, because you already know the whole presentation. Yeah, you yeah. can say that. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. I will talk by, with my heart. Or so. so, I am Amelia Brandão. You can call me Brand On. It's easier. <laughs> <laughs> so, I came from uh, Portugal, Porto School of Economics and Management, and I am one of the authors of this investigation. Okay? And the topic will be the negative one. So beside the human-AI interaction, be talking about the users, the benefits, the application, I was looking for the dark side of this human-AI interaction, okay? Which is the feeling, which is the perception that consumer can take regarding all these things, okay? Okay, sorry. So you can put uh, a QR code for to follow my presentation. I hope my Ricardo, the main author, will be online. Hi, Ricardo. I hope you you will, will be listening this presentation. Yes. Sorry. Did you get it? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. So this is the agenda that I bring regarding the uh, natural structure of a presentation. And let's introduce the topic. So <laughs> the gap was very clear regarding the dark side about the human AI interaction. And so on, the research question was, what type of negative feelings can consumer experience in relation to brand when we consider our interaction, human AI, okay? So, and you are like wonder, how you know that we have the negative perceptions, of course. So I think that will be one of the questions of Amalia, but we did the homework and we realize uh, in a first screen regarding that there is a uh, negative uh, cues regarding the human AI interaction. So the literature review, of course, follow the AI, all the literature review, of course, very updated and very recently. We conceptualize, we bring to the theories regarding this human AI interaction, okay? And our focus was in the negativity in the cons brand consumer relationship. Okay. So here we have, we are, we are fast, and it, this is uh, the web 3.0 with this new challenge that we already know and we heard in this morning presentation and regarding the literature review. Okay. These are a few samples about the feelings that we experience, okay? Uh, my One of my expert feelings about negativity and the negative consumer brand relationship and brand management. So what we know, we know that the most uh, preeminent incidents about the brand negativity are regarding the offensive or deceptive adver advertising, loss of consumer trust, products or service failure, or negative pre, uh, exp previous experience, damage to reputation and brand image, and unethical or irresponsible practice. And I can, I want to go more regarding this extension, regarding the atmosphere, the human AI interaction. So if you already have in the offline, in the other environments, we want to extend and to look for some negativity cues in this human AI interaction. So the methodology approach, we take firstly an ethnography approach, okay? We conducted uh, using the, the web scrapping to catch 
the data, okay? We put here a visual schema, okay, regarding the process, the process that we made. We wanted to join these two main topics, artificial intelligence and brand negativity in the human AI interactions. And we proceed with the sentiment analysis uh, to conduct this investigation, okay? For the netography approach, we use the very uh, name with POSINET, okay? Um, it's impossible to avoid. And then we try to put a more complex uh, data analysis. Instead of NVIVO, MaxGDA, FUSISET, we use the data mining approach. And this was the schema approach and step approach, okay? We collected from the Reddit because the Twitter is no longer Twitter, okay? It's the X. <laughs> And Twitter <laughs> blocked the to capture uh, the data. So when we are research, we must to to have an alternative, and we use the uh, ready to data. Okay. So here we have the subreddit communities that we we analyze metaverse and consumption, artificial intelligence and branding. And we, we take the uh, thousand uh, last uh, comments uh, that it was uh, collected and put in this, uh, not tweets, but posted in this uh, data set, okay? Uh, this was an example about the process that I will not bore you about the, the methodology process. So we, we transformed the, all the qualitative information and uh, binary information, so O, o and 1. And this uh, was one of the posts to, uh, to approach. So we put here, we have the, may I zoom? Yeah? I don't know. May I? I don't know either. Yes. Here we have the red. This is an example about the R from Reddit and the artificial intelligence subcommunity. And this was a comment that using uh, the natural language process, we transform uh, our data set in a, a binary uh, analysis. Okay, and during the process, of course, we made some adjustments of the punctuation, okay? Something like this, hello. So it's not, so we, we, we eliminated the stop words, I am happy, okay? To avoid some bias in the results. And this long sentence, it was transforming this. So happy will not stop buzzing, okay? This was one of the examples that I bring to try to tangible all these things, okay? Sentiment analysis. We put all together uh, in the classification after tokenization, removing stop words, normalizing words, and vectorizing, and then we analyze in the sentiment intensity analyzer and after the virus. And here we have the results, negative versus positive. So the positive one is the most proeminent feelings, okay? All these are results and the red color, it refers to the negative side, okay? The blue is the neutral sentiment feelings uh, results, okay? So findings, we have the prevalence of positive sentiments across all communities uh, against the literature that said that, for example, for corporate cultural perceived, the negativity in applying using artificial intelligence is more prominent. And they say that the, these two, uh, these three researchers, okay, one from 2023, more negative reactions to the negative properties of technology than the positive properties. So this is against, uh, against our the literature review. Maybe, uh, and remember, we take the Reddit community, so they are very professional and they are very know uh, about what they are talking about. Maybe for that reasons, we have the positive ones and the positive comments was uh, 
uh, more provision. Okay, so of course we must put the branding. Okay, because we must look at related with branding and negativity when we apply artificial <laughs> intelligence, and in this case also uh, the metaverse. Regarding the negative feelings, or the we we have the most word uh, was the eight here. Okay, eight disgust. And we have here a surprise. And the surprise was kill. Kill, yes, you have heard. And it was a very surprise. And this kill can be kill the brand. These feelings can be reciprocal regarding kill. Who, who is the killer, okay? The artificial intelligence can kill the brand and the brand uh, and consumers want to kill the brain in the artificial intelligence. Okay, so I, this must to be more uh, deep, of course, in so on and in ongoing research is a very interesting. It was completely unexpected. It was completely surprised because in the negative consumer brand relationship, we already know the most negative feeling is eight. Okay, is the most is the positive of brand love. Okay, so kill is layers of eight, is an action, is a behavior, is not only a feeling, and this was unexpected. Okay, and I say, wow, regarding this result, what is this? And is an action, is an imperative that they are saying kill. Okay, and this is very, very, very strong regarding the artificial intelligence. Okay, so here we have the conclusions about the sentiment analysis regarding the most uh, predominant uh, feelings regarding the human AI interactions. Okay, regarding the literature practical and theoretical application, we extend the knowledge about negative consumer brand relationship in the domain of artificial intelligence. We want, uh, um, and we have a new element that uh, it makes sense about the brand anthropomorphism. We are talking about the brands and how can we anthropomorph anthropomorphize them. So kill is an uh, anthropomorphic element that it was uh, introduced, and this is completely new regarding the old knowledge that uh, from 2023, okay? And here we have, of course, implications for the management and managerial perspective regarding what they must look in depth regarding uh, these conclusions. So, to future research and some of the limitations is only the development of the Python code, of course, is maybe uh, or can be we, we can improve the Python code, of course, and. Um, so there is a few discussions and few, very, very few papers regarding the branding and AI. So to the future, we, we uh, recommend to, uh, to have a conduct uh, a more quantitative using constructs and a survey to analyze uh, uh, with the data mining approach, okay? And maybe to conduct an exploratory research, maybe or, or after to uh, validate the results. Study one, study two, as we already know in ABS three and four uh, target publications, that is our target, okay? So the future is in your hands. I hope that you you like this presentation and thank you for listening. Yes, congratulations for your presentation. Even if negative, it was very full of light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was very, it was very nice presentation. I have a comment or challenge. What do you, if you think that it's possible? Can we relate somehow these results about the humanization or the anthropomorphic um, 
violent um, sentiment that you found uh, about the killing with other uh, um, evidence that we have that are related with the cancel culture and the boycotting of brands. Mm -hmm. Because like from what, what I know about the literature, we know that there is a boycotting since very old time. And nowadays, especially in social media, however, you are, uh, as you mentioned, the data are sc uh, scrapped through Reddit. Um, I think that the cancel culture and this idea that we can cancel or kill or making someone disappear if we don't like it, that's what they are doing. Okay. I don't think it's a trend. Thank you for your comment. The most near that we have in the literature regarding the kill is brand boycott. Okay, that I, I yes, the, uh, it was for example referred in the, my paper in the European Journal of Marketing. It was brand boycott. It was in anti-brand communities. Uh, the difficult is I applied consumer culture theory in that paper in the European Journal of Marketing. The problem is I didn't apply. Uh, in this case, because it's very difficult, as you know, we are in a global community and I cannot uh, distinguish the cultural perspective or the cultural background, okay? So the reason why to conduct exploratory and restructured interview is like to have a clusterization regarding the consumer culture perspective. I'm completely with you. I think that the cultural perspective, and we try, it was one of the things that we tried to pick and we did find, oh, who said this? For example, I remember in the European Journal of Marketing, one of the consumers that I read in anti-brand consumption tell me, tell, tell me no, uh, tell to the community because it, uh, it was a close community. It was, I love to hate can be the, the near to this uh, feeling of uh, or attitude to kill, to kill or to be the brand to be killed. Okay, so I completely agree with with, uh, with this, and then I think that the best way for me is or contact the survey. Okay, survey plus the uh, quantitative, uh, qualitative one with Smith structured interview. The both. We are trying to ongoing on this research with this both method. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. Amalia, next question. Yes. Um, very interesting and thank you for uh, the presentation. But um, it raised another question in my mind that some of the perceived negative feelings or perceived negative words actually might be also on a positive level, like I would kill to have your dress. This is a positive thing, but I use the kill word. Or uh, I can use it in a positive way. Then regarding the I love to hate brands, some people love to feel important by hating yes. brands. Yes. So um, this would be a very interesting study to do because sometimes we mimic negative uh, emotions just to feel important, mm -hmm. just to feel part of the community, mm -hmm. or who knows, you want to attract, to, to yeah, attract, attract attention, attention and so on. So I think your, your subject is very interesting and uh, um, who knows, maybe um, you, you can uh, do um, more articles regarding this true perception of negative uh, words or, or negative emotions. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Amalia. Any other questions? If not, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>
the, you don't need this because you have screens on your tables. So our agenda, it's the same and uh, and respects the the scientific method. So uh, it's the same. Okay. So re re regarding the our context, it was this. So it artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, and metaverse. And uh, our path is the web 3.0, as we already know. And uh, uh, this was the context that we explored and gave more strength to conduct this, this, this research. It was the metaverse, consumers, the brands, and brand equity. Our perspective is, uh, as brands are extending in a new context that names metaverse, how it uh, manage, how it will be the consequence for the brand equity. This was our thought and our soul to, to conduct uh, this research. Our managerial management motivation were the numbers and they speak for itself. The numbers are huge regarding the investment, regarding the number of brands. And I wanted to highlight this one by the year of 2030, the worldwide market revenue is expected to reach this incredible number, okay? So uh, it's a huge topic, it's a huge context uh, that, of course, we, we, uh, we, we bring to this research and this conference. So we have here some scientific gaps. We highlight and we pick just one. Of course, you can continue and pick the other one. So they are very, very updated. And recently, 2022, 2023, regarding how should the uh, artificial intelligence AI market be measured. So how important is the KPIs, the tools, and measure to manage. This is our, uh, our role. So the aim of this paper is to understand the perspective of consumers. We take the, the consumer behavior and consumer perspective to conduct and how this can uh, be managed for brand management in an effective way. Uh, and effective way is and related with the brand equity. How the research question is how consumer perceiveness affects the brand equity on metaverse, and it was uh, our what we we take the literature review. We have several topics regarding the brand digitalization, metaverse, and brand equity. In the brand equity, we are talking about the value about uh, related with the brand, and we take the perspective of Keller. Okay, the, the most common in the literature review is David Acker with the four dimensions: awareness, image, perceived quality, and loyalty. And we took the brand equity. So the knowledge why? Because the topic is very recently, the topic is very updated, and the, the, the application of brand, uh, David Acker is too earlier because we have not enough time to, to have the third level of the pyramid of the David Acker. So we take the brand equity from the Keller that I like the, the, the knowledge, and we try to link uh, both topics, metaverse and brand equity, as consumers and brand equity. The common element is the brand equity that link the consumer perspective with the metaverse, okay? Of course, it's impossible to avoid the digitalization and how technologies uh, are related with the, the, the metaverse. So oh, now we're going to the methodology. I know it sounds a little bit repetitive because it's Reddit again. Uh, and the first methodology used here was ethnography and web scrapping with Python coding. Okay, so it's the same. I'm not going to be repetitive or take too long. This is the main process of ethnography. And then this is the, the different way. We, cho we chose four different statistic models those LDA, neural LDA, ETM, contextualized topic models. <laughs> so we had to test them, these statistic models with these four metrics. They enhance the coherence, 
diversity, similarity, and significance metrics. So we can, we'll, oh, and, for, uh, and after that, we have the, the complete methodology. We collected data from June 20, from 2022 to May 2023, and we used the subreddit community of brands and metaverse, okay? Not the all community of, uh, of, uh, of Reddit. Then we, we, we've, done, we've done the pre-processing, the same thing that Professor Amelia has done in the last paper, remove symbols, numbers, stop words. It's basically trick text for us to analyze. And we applied the modeling and the metrics. And this is the, the metric, yeah. Now we have these results. We compared the four models with the four metrics and the best results and what, what, we, what it caught our attention is the metric four. Um, it's the significant metric, the fourth, um, because for this research, I think is the most important and it has the, and it had the best result for us to analyze. So we use the latent direct light allocation and we obtain this. Let's focus for just this paper and this presentation where we are just going to focus on the plus one and we are going to see um, it has almost a quarter of the entire words in the same comments. This is a, prob uh, a probabilistic um, um, method. So we have these results. The overall in the cluster one, we can see 25.7% of the tokens of the, the words are on the cluster one. So all the comments on the cluster one have these words, 25 of them. And we can look, the first one is metaverse. Uh, the overall is almost 1,600, but this uh, statistic model, um, it's here, estimates that in the cluster one is about 600. So we can see the first words are very important for brand equity. It's people, like, think, uh, one, blood, virtual. So they're very important words for, um, for brand <laughs> equity. So this, because this was the last minute. <laughs> um, our main conclusions. Uh, we can see the astounding overall term frequency of the word metaverse, uh, 1,618, uh, with an esti uh, when estimated term frequency of 539 on the top of one. We can see this is by the comments and in the paper it's more specific, of course. Uh, it's a dynamic arena for brands, the metaverse, like, like our colleague uh, to said before. And we noticed an increasing prominence of metaverse on the online communities. So for brands, this is very important. Um, the LDA model, this is our contribution for our scientific, the LDA, mo LDA model. And her, the pivotal insights, eliminate, eliminating this complex interplay. The data mining exploratory, I, for us, we think it's very, very important because we can apply this in several theoretic models like of brand equity, Acker, Keller, and all of this. We can use this methodology. I think the methodology is the key of this paper. It's how to analyze data uh, for and applying in theoretical models. We can go to the limitations in future research. So we, we have, like the professor said before, our aim was to study Twitter because we, now X, uh, because, because it has, I think it has more comments of different types of consumers. But th since Elon Musk uh, uh, took a part of Twitter now X, they closed even for academics, they, they closed all the accounts even for academics. So, so they don't like us. So we chose Reddit. So we can, we can apply the limitation. We can apply this to LinkedIn and a lot of uh, Instagram, Facebook. We can apply this methodology 
in all social media. So we can, the future research could adopt more future, uh, more mixed approach, qual qualitative, quantitative, I don't know the time if uh, so we just can. the, the last, the the last, last question. question. Yeah. Okay. okay. So future research should address the, the limitations uh, and then expand that, 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 the sources and cross cultural research design. Like I said, mixed, mixed methods. We have a world uh, to do with this methodology. So thank you very much for your time. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of things is repetitive, so it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have any questions at that point? Yes, we have. Please. Thank you for the uh, presentation and thank you for coming to the conference. Yeah. It's nice. But um, maybe I lost focus on uh, certain points. Um, I I saw some brands at the beginning. You should use some some brands, some logo. You put some logos there, mm -hmm. and then oh, yeah. at the result regarding the words, I saw no connection with the brand and the words. Maybe if you could explain more, because here it, it was the, yeah. the point where I, I lost I know connection. What you mean. We okay. didn't choose any brand in specific. We choose a lot of words with, regarding brand, brand, branding. We don't separate them by sector or luxury or we, we didn't choose any brand in particular. particular. We analyzed comments commenting brands brand branding not a specific brand okay this will be one of the yeah that's one of the future to take pro pro like pro sector, different the different like sector or... angles yeah yeah and my and also methodological suggestion is maybe scrapping using hashtag yes for example so we have a i word. thought maybe being a yeah. marketing manager of a brand a company i really would like to apply your methodology to my specific, maybe it's not my um, corporate hashtag. Maybe I have another hashtag that is much more spread into my community really in relation to my brand. Just this methodology because I think it's we did, we've done the literature review and we didn't see this anywhere to study brands. So mm -hmm. you can apply this Everywhere. Everywhere, you know, yes. it's yes. very avant-garde. All areas. Yeah. <laughs> really interesting. Okay, any other questions? And that would be great. I just got an idea. Oh, nice. Thank you, Amalia. So I, I think work on a future project. Yeah. I was thinking maybe we can actually think about a project that could actually involve uh, companies, SMEs, whatever. I do not have, for example, my brand is not very well known, but I could do a test. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I could do a test or a simulation using maybe one of the programs that you uh, yes. discussed about and see what would be the potential perceptions. That would be amazing. Yes. So yes. I could prepare for maybe a new strategy, a new marketing campaign. Yeah. yeah, just I got the idea. Yes. Yeah. See, that's, the, uh, that's our objective, is. Yes. is to apply that methodology yes. everywhere. Yes. So, that's nice. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank for you. Yeah. Right, protecting the right. 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 The collaboration of one uh, colleague from the University of Zaragoza in Spain and two researchers from the University of Cantabria in northern Spain. And uh, it, it's focused on the communication made by destination marketing organizations about tourism destination. No? So they are the main uh, responsibles of communicating the destination. Uh, but despite a huge amount of research on destination image during the last decades, uh, very research has been done about how GMO's communication 
impacts on uh, Julie's responses, not towards the destination. So uh, our idea uh, with this um, research is uh, integrate into the traditional cognitive affective approach to destination image, the sensory component of the destination, no? how it's projected uh, by DMOs. Uh, besides, uh, our research also takes into consideration um, real online sales in the e-commerce platform of the DMO. So the dependent variable is not uh, sales per se uh, variable such as intentions or attitudes or whatever, or uh, engagement that is the other traditional variable used in this type of research. No? So the objective of the paper is to generate knowledge uh, about how the online sales of uh, destinations, studies and services are influenced by the image of the destination that is projected by the DMO in social media. Uh, Therefore, uh, we provide three, contribu three contributions that are analyzing uh, how DMOs uh, communicate uh, the image uh, of the destination, real data uh, from both the, com the communication made by the DMO in a specific social media, that is Facebook, and also the online sales that are made in the e-commerce platform of the destination, and then uh, introducing or incorporating these three types of uh, projecting image of the destination that are the traditional cognitive and affective uh, dimension for destination in image and uh, this sensory uh, projected, projected image of the destination that is related to making the tourist or the potential customer to feel the destination evoking the senses of, of the person, no? the, the wind in the air or the, the taste of a dish or whatever no? uh, related to the destination. So uh, regarding the literature review, uh, we have, have already said that the, the research line on destination image is well, very it's huge. No, there are a lot of papers about this, about this. But um, most research is focused on user-generated content more than film-generated content. And uh, in the specific case of film-generated <laughs> content, there is a bit uh, little research on. DMOs, no? what DMOs are projecting as main responsibles of communicating the, the destination. No? Uh, so uh, we have to, uh, the purpose of the, the main purpose of the research is to incorporate this third dimension of destination image, the sensory dimension, and put it in relationship with this uh, a stronger uh, dependent variable that is real sales, not, not self, uh, self, um... wait. <laughs> Oh, yeah. self per se, sorry, uh, uh, variables or this engagement measured by shares, likes, comments, and so on the social, uh, the social platform. No? So, a previous research has confirmed uh, the relevance of sensory stimuli in uh, tourist responses as satisfaction and loyalty, and recent papers, paper, sorry, uh, for example, in Lee et al. in the context of destination websites. Uh, found out that these sensory text descriptions uh, work better than functional text when uh, introducing the content of the website, no? Focusing more in senses and less in the general descriptions. Uh, and uh, in 2023, Lin et al. proposed a, a model of destination brand experience, and uh, they incorporated uh, this uh, sensory dimension and found out that Sensorial dimension uh, with um, the, the affective dimension of destination image uh, were the more relevant variables to predict the intention to visit that destination. Also, according to this evidence, we propose that uh, the projected image uh, of the destination by the DMO uh, has a positive influence of uh, on online sales uh, of trees and services at the destination, uh, considering these three uh, dimensions of. Uh, Destination image that are the cognitive dimension, the affective dimension, and this new sensor, sensorial dimension. No? Uh, let, uh, let's go with the methodology. Uh, to undertake this research, we used two data sets. The first data set was uh, a register of the post made by the DMO in Facebook, uh, intending to promote the destination. Uh, well, first of all, sorry, this research is focused in a, in a ski resort, a mountain and a ski resort, no? so it's a specific a type of tourism destination. We used two data sets uh, related to this destination. Uh, first data set was 
the register of the post published by the BMO uh, on Facebook on Facebook from October 2015 to April 2017. So those were two winter season in the ski resort. Uh, and uh, we registered information related to uh, the time when the post was published, the, the year and uh, the hour, the content of the post, including text, format, format characteristics of the message and so, and a third, the reach of, of the folks, no? the number of people who viewed, viewed the post. And the second data set uh, was um, the register of the online sales uh, on tourism services. No? And specifically, uh, we registered the online sales of ski passes in the ski resort. 45% uh, of all the sales were made in the online platform. Uh, so uh, the dependent variable of the in our uh, research model was the natural logarithm of total online sales obtained during the same period between a focal post and the next post. So we were considering that uh, the sales between two posts were caused by the first post. Uh, and then the explanatory variables were the, these three dimensions of um, the transition <laughs> image, a projective cognitive image, uh, were, was related following Stilidis uh, uh, to natural characteristics, amenities, trees, attractions, and accessibility. So um, human coders, coders sorry, uh, assigned a value to this variable depending on the number of uh, items that were included in the post. All these, these, all these cognitive uh, uh, attributes of the destination. Uh, then we have projective affective image that was uh, measured um, on the basis that the post uh, contained uh, mentions to relaxing, pleasant, exciting, and liveliness of the destination. Uh, so we have a uh, value one for post with no uh, no reference to affective issues, and uh, a value five for those in the, in the case of those posts that uh, appealed to four of these uh, affective uh, variables. So, uh, and then we have the projective sensor image that uh, also uh, had values from one to five, depending on the number of senses that were evoked in each post. That was the way, that was the way we oper operationalized the, the variables. Uh, we also introduced control variables that were here publication, uh, multimedia content in the post, if the, if the, code, if the post included photos or, or videos, and the type of publication because uh, the sales may be conditioned by the natural circumstances in each, in each winter season, uh, specifically the weather, no? the amount of, of snow and the conditions to practice the, the expo. Uh, then we propose this research model that is uh, reflected in this equation that contains uh, the three main uh, uh, explanatory variables and the three uh, control variables included in the model. We uh, also undertook a control for potential issues, methodological, methodological or statistical issues uh, in the estimation of the model. And uh, the results we obtained were that uh, of the three uh, dimensions of uh, destination projected image, the two that were that had a significant effect on online sales uh, of uh, services at the destination were the cognitive and the sensory uh, dimensions, not the not the um, uh, affective dimension. No. So uh, going to the conclusions, uh, our result uh, results support the need to incorporate sensory aspects in the in the measurement of destination image and and how destination image. Oh, sorry, the destination images uh, may impact consumer, uh, tourist and consumers' uh, responses. Uh, in the case of this specific tourism destination, uh, sensory and cognitive image uh, projected by the DMO were the more salient uh, explanatory variables. And uh, we also, uh, we also uh, found out that uh, the, using this uh, harder variable that is online sales or tourism services, uh, may be useful if we, if we have these data that are difficult to obtain usually for scientific research. They depend on companies and companies are not so willing to, to allow us to use, use the data. No? Regarding future research, uh, 
we consider it would be interesting to apply the model to other geog geographical context and trees and services in searching for potential generalization of the results through the context and uh, analyzing the impact of social media posts in other channels because because we live in an omnichannel world now and omnichannelity uh, is relevant in the in the way uh, uh, destination image uh, created online may be affecting other uh, sales platform, physical world, travel agencies, or whatever. So thank you so much. And if you have any questions. Perfect. Thank you. 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 I don't know exactly why did you remain to this uh, period, but having in mind the fact that we had COVID crisis, I think the behavior perceptions and everything that you analyzed could have been changed a little bit. Yeah. So maybe you could extend more or uh, get the, the data updated yeah. uh, and uh, uh, it would help a lot this destination uh, agencies to promote better the I, uh, tourism. I totally agree with you. The problem is that gathering this type of data requires a huge amount of work because, uh, in this, well, first of all, you have you need the approval of the company to give you the data, and in this specific case, uh, we use we used human coders. So human people had to read the one thousand six hundred something post uh, from first, and then they had another judge that uh, decided if in the case that were contradictions between the coders and so. So we are trying to use the data we have, we have because gathering new data, uh, which require a new fieldwork that is not so easy to undertake right now for, right now for us. But that's the only answer I can uh, give you because I totally agree with, with you in the need to, to update the data. Yeah, because at the beginning of the presentation, you referred to that uh, uh, DTO, Destination Tourism Organization Promoter. I don't know. I don't remember the, 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 the letters that you used for uh, the uh, institutions. Okay. But if you refer to the perceptions and effective sensory images and so on, it will be interesting also to translate it at the managerial level. I mean, yes, people do feel that, but how do you use this information so for the next season yeah, yeah. you can be you can be prepared? Because um, the data refers to the past, but how how can I use the past to prepare the future? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. this was made uh, already have, have have already been made because one of the authors of the paper. Uh, work for the company, so he, he translated uh, or, or transferred all the information to the company. So I hope they have learned something <laughs> of the research. Thank you. Yes. I have one more. No, please go ahead. Okay. I was just wondering uh, if it could be introduced at the national level, like for the national tourist uh, obsession, for the ones, you know, and for both for the regional and local ones as well. Well, the but the problem, the main issue there should be to adapt the dependent variable. Perhaps you could uh, use the total number of people coming to a country or mm -hmm. because you, in at the national level, you don't usually have a e-commerce platform to, to sell service directly to, mm -hmm. to tourists or customers. Mm -hmm. So you should have to, but, but the, the dependent, the, the explanatory variables are totally applied to, applicable to, to national level. Yes, the, the feeling of the snow is difficult to <laughs> feel in my own country, for example, no, in Portugal. So tell me your share. Tell me your share. Nation, nation, destination, destination uh, has, have also senses attached to their own mm -hmm. image or how people perceive them. It's, I think it could be m more complicated to have a perception of a country. I mean, imagine I'm, I'm Italian, or what? in our countries we have plain differences. No, so yeah. I also to 
I don't know. Maybe it's just yeah, yeah. it's you, a good suggestion, but I can see a lot of difficulties to operation. With cliches. Yeah. But in the case of Italy or even Spain, Spain it's complicated. The, for example, tasting the country is a very, very relevant attribute of the of the sensorial part of the national image. So also the DMO promoting the mountains and the sea, they yeah. want totally different perception yeah. and yes. sensitive yeah. and yes. May I? Just, just uh, no, just comments regarding what uh, I think that maybe I, I didn't hear so uh, about content marketing uh, literature review that I think that you must include because you collected posts from Facebook. So you must put the user generated content and content marketing. Uh, I think that is almost mandatory for uh, for your research, and I didn't saw. One of the other comment is, is that you approach uh, online econometric a simple econometric model. I think so, not a profit, not a logit. I think it was a regression analysis, a simple regression analysis. Yes. Okay, maybe try to sophisticate a little more with the profit, uh, with logic. I think it will be more right. for but publication. Yeah, 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 but the dependent variable we have is quantitative, so we can't use. Yes, you can. You can apply. You can uh, convert. You why to convert a quantitative variable? Yes, you convert qualitative. the qualitative in the quantitative because you you, you convert it. A qualitative the posts no. You you. But you the dependent variable is quantitative. Yes, the depend. Yes, it's the reason why I prefer, as you already is that a dependent variable yes. that is a, a observed variable. Prefer, for example, the others to be in a survey using constructors in latent variables in a survey, and use the content marketing approach with an ethnography or a data, a data mining approach that will be more sophisticated right. and less biased. Because one of the risks in your classification is to have a bias. Yeah, yeah, yeah I uh, And I think that will be more. Yes. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you very much. Are we ready for the next presentation? Yes, we are. 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 Yes, Ouais. On, on voit pas ça au fond. Non, pas pour l'instant. Ah. Pour l'autre salle, oui, mais pas pour cette salle-là. Oh, well, where is my presentation? It's you. Okay. Yeah, why? Not false, yeah. Um, Don't count time because I'm not. Oh, my God. I'm not <laughs> Yeah. And I can I count? No. Sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this session. Uh, my name is Braulio Alturas. I came from Ishtar University Institute of Lisbon, where I teach and where I do research in a research center called Star. Um, I'm going to present the my, my presentation has this title: "Too Good to Go: Acceptance Factors of Modern Education." Waste. It's an exploratory study, a uh, quantitative exploratory study with a small sample. Uh, about this um, uh, application, is a, to go to go is a mobile application uh, that uh, um, uh, you, we can use it to buy products uh, that if we don't buy it, uh, they go to waste. Okay. 
and uh, it, it was made by me and by Juliana Souza. And Juliana Souza is okay. Good work now. Okay, Juliana Souza is this <laughs> nice girl. And this is my agenda, uh, a brief introduction, literature review, methodology, results, conclusions, and go on. So uh, why is this important? Why is this relevant? Uh, because it's important to reduce food waste for environmental and social reasons. Uh, also, it's important to understand, to, un to understand the impact of information system on reducing food waste. And for us, it under, it's important to understand factors that lead or not to the success of this application, the to good to go application. Oh, and of course, all this is important because of the uh, sustainable uh, development goals of the United Nations. Um, our research question is what factors contribute to use of, of an application that contributes to the use of excess food to significantly reduce its waste? And we have uh, uh, five main objectives. The first one, explore the population's knowledge and behavior regarding food waste in Portugal. Then the second objective, understand expectations and level of adoption and the characteristics of use of technology in relation to food waste, namely in this, uh, with this application, the to go to application. Um, the third, analyze the user's perception of the to go to go and compare it with other similar apps. The fourth, analyze the user's perception regarding ease of use and determine how the application can have a good level of, of acceptance and trust. And finally, understand what main expectations regarding the systems, uh, understand if they uh, this is considered discreditable and could be associated with social needs. Um, our literature review uh, focuses uh, three main areas. The first of all, the food waste. Um, um, approximately one third of the food produced is wasted in, in the world. More than half of these carpet products are fruits and vegetables that are damaged or out of standard size. And uh, in Europe, it is estimated that 25 to 30 percent of food goes to waste. Um, on the other hand, we know that more than 820 million people in the world are hungry or with food insecure. And the FAO estimates that the economic cost of lost or wasted products is 900, 900 billion euros per year. So in, in my country, Portugal, it's estimated that for each person uh, between 20 and 30 kilos of food, food are so away per year, corresponding around 1 million tons per year. And uh, um, uh, about the, the, the use of the information technologies, uh, the value of using a, an application uh, for users may vary, depend on the application value proposition. And using this application to do, to go um, allows users to benefit of network effects, uh, which translate into possible increase in the perception of well, about this um, this uh, uh, application, to good to go application, um, uh, it has around one hundred sixty four thousand partners, including restaurants, supermarkets, bakeries, hotels, and cafe and cafes in eighteen countries, serving sixty two million users in Eastern Europe and North America, uh, United States, Canada, and uh, almost all the Eastern Europe is. Uh, it is in Poland, but it's not in Czech Republic, neither in Romania, <laughs> sorry, uh, but uh, maybe uh, uh, it could arrive uh, soon. And um, uh, it allows uh, users to purchase uh, a magic box uh, with food products that would otherwise go to waste. Uh, we can uh, choose the, the magic box, uh, the, 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 the place where we are going to pick up and the, when buy the products uh, with a uh, lower cost. So uh, the, the application was created in 2015 in Denmark. It has grown exponentially, recording 200 increase 
uh, in revenue, uh, and the app has the fast growing search node for that by number of downloads. Uh, the application already has uh, more than uh, 1 million and 600 uh, users in Portugal and uh, uh, 4,150 and 52 <laughs> business associated with the application, which together have already set more than 3 million of views. Okay, and that's the, the, the application. Okay. So the, the third area of our um, literature review was the technology adoption. We used the TEM, Technology Adoptance Model, Acceptance Model, uh, that was proposed by Davis in uh, 89, and intended to explain the behavior of use of technologies. The TEM model is still the most popular among, among researchers engaged in acceptance and use of technology, focusing primarily in two fundamental dimensions. These two, the perception of useful, usefulness, that is the degree uh, to which uh, a person believes that the use of certain system will improve their performance, and the uh, perception of ease of use relating to the degree to which a person believes that using a particular system will be effortless. So we, we apply this model to this, uh, uh, to this mobile application, the Google, to Google application. So uh, our methodology, okay. Uh, uh, was an exploratory study using a quantitative methodology through the application of an online quest questionnaire. Uh, the structure of the questionnaire consisting in two blocks of questions. The first obtain biographical data, and the second divided in two sub blocks to obtain information regarding the food waste and to understand the level of knowledge and use of the food. Um, uh, our sampling, uh, we, we obtained. Uh, uh, by uh, one microphone snowball uh, on um, social media, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, uh, we use the Qualtrics to collect the data and the duration of data collection uh, was three months during the summer of uh, 2023. Um, uh, then we, you, you, we use uh, SPSS uh, with descriptive uh, analysis, simple components factor analysis from a calculated person population. Uh, our sample is a small sample, it's a really small sample, 107 respondents with the uh, age range between uh, 18 and 60, uh, gender mostly female, female in the level of education, mostly higher education. Uh, so, um, when we, we ask uh, the respondents, uh, uh, what you consider to be the level of food waste in Portugal, and most of, of the, the people say that is high, and I believe it's true, it's high, it's a high uh, food waste. Uh, when we ask uh, if they um, are an important thing, uh, uh, our respondents, when only one third of the respondents have the, the application, and uh, uh, then for those who have the application, we ask, how many times have you purchased a magic box since installing applications? And most of them, 26% uh, never, and 29% from one to three times on me. So they have the application, but they don't use it too much. So um, uh, about the opinion of the, the application, most of the, the respondents said that we recommend the application. They are satisfied with the application. Uh, uh, about the question, why don't you use uh, 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 the question for those who don't use uh, the the, um, the main answer was because is uh, they never did choose box for specific eating moments such as lunch, dinner, and so. Uh, um, about the question, what do you expect from to go to go as a movement against food waste? And most of the responses say that. The activity is your food waste. And uh, when using the application, was the, the purpose of the, the people? We we think, we, we believe it was the reduction of food waste. And yes, is that it's not the most important. The most important is to, to, to buy products with uh, less cost, to reduce the cost of products. Oh, so so uh, then we, we, we compute the principal components factor analysis and we find out these uh, five components that indeed are the, the components of the TEM model. Uh, then 
analysis and, and we find out that uh, indeed uh, uh, attitude uh, is related is uh, I, I are correlated with perceived uses and perceived use of use and also the behavior intention and all and the behavior intention correlated with actual system use is what we have here. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, conclusions about our main objectives. Uh, we find out that there is a, a wide perception of the level of food waste in Portugal. Uh, the majority of particip participants are aware of the, the application to good to grow, but this is not reflecting in the, the, the address to meet and the use, use of the, the application. The majority of participants partially agree with the, the value proposition of the application. Uh, they point these the advantages, uh, they uh, disadvantage were identified using the to good to go. And the majority agree that the purpose of use is, uh, is associated with the lower cost of products and the reduction of food waste. And finally, the, the majority of the respondents partially agree that they expect to uh, provide information to users about food waste. Uh, main contributions. Uh, we have contribution on the development of new uh, features for the application. Uh, such as home deliverance, uh, the different times to pick up items, possibility to determine how to pick up the items, uh, possibility to, to choose certain product options, and also in the development of actions in the community regarding the waste, uh, provide reliable information about waste, effectively in um, organize events, and even promote discussion of package in school. Finally, um, of course, the, this study has lots of limitations, but the, the main is the uh, sample and the reduced geographical range of the participants, which may uh, help bias the results. Uh, for further future research, uh, study by area of our country, be, because we do, could be different in the north, in the south, in the center, I really don't know, uh, and comparative study between countries that use uh, the, 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 the app that have the, the app. And uh, I'll also, also study other applications than other different applications. So that's all. Uh, oh. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. And if you have some slides, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So congratulations, Pablo. It was a very topical. I think that we can have a future research publication together. Together. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, to go to go because it's not application, but I analyzed the until so the waste the food waste. Until the retailers into mm -hmm. channel distribution, Reca, restaurants, B two B, and I applied thirty six. We structured this review, and it was conducted this year, and concluded in August of this year. So I think that we can have synergy because the topic is very topical for sure. And regarding this concrete investigation and research, I, of course, I suggest the moderation or the moderator variable, of course, because the TAM is, uh, is useful, it's effective, but it's simple as publication, of course. Try to add our multiple factor analysis or moderator variable. I think that will be uh, perfect, perfect. And congratulations for your. Yes, if we, if we have a, a, a broader sample, uh, maybe we, we yes. use uh, another. Yes, model. we have elasticity. To, some, yes, some we have elasticity. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you so much and congratulations, Paul. Amelia. Amelia. <laughs> Amelia, Paul. Yes. It was interesting what you said at the end promoting educational packages in schools. Could you explain more what does this mean? Yes, uh, we believe that the, the, 
the owners but now of the, the, the application could uh, be more pedagogical mm -hmm. and, uh, yes. and uh, made some interventions in schools. Uh, because what we found out that uh, we asked the people who want to come back to, to, to come back to food waste. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And do you have the application? Yes, yes. And do you use it? Do you use it? Well, uh, well, no. no. <laughs> well. I installed it and I, I never used it. Oh, okay. 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 Thank you. Yes, you are already Just so Maybe good. when the application arrives in Romania, it's very uh, used to it. And Mali will be the promoter. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. If I may have a comment here in the Czech Republic, we don't have this application, but we have a similar one. It's called Nesnezeno in Czech. Translated, it means like not eaten. Okay. Oh, okay. And it also works with the packages and things. It shows you, you know, what is closest to you, how far you, you just need to go. Yeah, we use the same thing. Yeah. Maybe it's that, so we have... is that why you don't have it? Because uh, it so uh, exists in Poland, in Germany, in Austria, all, all, all the countries that are wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it looks like this, actually, the icon. But okay. similarly, I installed it, but I never actually used it. Ah. And just one question. And you, Braulio, did you have this application? Yes, and I use it. Yes. Ah. Not too much. Not too much. But okay. I use it. I use it. Okay. But it's and, interesting because in Portugal, data say that the usage is increasing. Yes. 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 But uh, um, for, the, the, the application has some problems. For instance, uh, oh, I I, to pick some, some boxes, I, I have to go to a certain place in certain time, yeah. for instance, in the, 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 the supermarkets, you, you you need to go uh, when the supermarket is uh, closing. Then they, they if you are earlier, if you go earlier, you don't have to. Yeah, to but I mean, so that's something. This is part of the effort of the consumers, yeah. right? This is the supposed contribution. And I think just to, I think that the most difficult proposal is to add the delivery part because then the delivery part mm -hmm. increase costs and mm -hmm. but maybe pickup points could be, could be good. pick up yeah. points. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Or you think it's somebody else? This is an extra presentation, yeah. right? Navigating the form. It's not this one. It's this will be the last one. Yeah. And will be presented by. Okay, great. So it's not this one. It's a different presentation? Yes. 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 It's another one. Open the open the folder. Colleagues. Is Nuno one? The, the second from the bottom. The second from the bottom. The second from above? The bottom. From the bottom. Yeah. This okay. has to come. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> For me, okay, if it's working, go okay. ahead. Okay, okay. Hi, everyone. Um, this is a, a baby investigation uh, from me and my colleague. We are from Bishkek, Lisbon. Uh, my name is Nujiada, and my colleague, Katarina Foa. Um, this is our, our agenda, our index. So uh, we have a theoretical framework, study description, objectives, mythology, results, and study limitations. So. Theoretical framework, digital transition or digital transformation. We have two two big big words here uh, that are four words. So, um, okay, uh, digital transition. We have a gradual adoption tech um, and adopting tech to improve operational processes. Digital transition is not a full transformation of. Uh, a process and the company. It's uh, a gradual adoption of a digital technology 
supported by a process, uh, implemented on a process specifically, because we don't transform <clears throat> uh, uh, a company in 100%. So, Core is maintaining and prevailing organizational structure and strategy for automation on in this case, marketing. So, digital transformation, the otherwise, it's a full adoption tech. Uh, it's applied to an organization and transforms all the strategy and planning and operational interaction with stack stakeholders and applies the change engagement to um, processes and strategies. So, change engagement. Uh, let's have a point here. Leadership. Leadership is very important according to Albrecht and all, because without leadership, we cannot change anything. If you want to change anything, um, we have an, we have to have an, a direction, so um, a point in view. So progressive adaptation, uh, very important with human resources. We have to adapt it uh, to mentally uh, take the step up. So, Process walls, it's obvious regarding what I said previously, and digitalization capacity is full core to apply a change engagement methodology. Uh, so, digitalization depends on leadership as well, commitment to change, literacy, intensity, and organizational engagement. So, literacy is very important to complement organizational engagement. To improve intensity, we know we don't have intensity without literacy. So <clears throat> we came to this: infrastructures support information systems uh, IT departments to um, develop two 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 cases: digital transition and digital transformation, supported by intensity, literacy, and engagement. They are the driving forces to apply marketing strategies that leads to CRM, marketing automation, CRM like Salesforce that uses it now, um, AI, and he knows what uh, the customers want to. So um, our study description, our baby study description, <laughs> uh, we have a, a digital literacy as a test structure from our investigation. We have digital intensity, infrastructure and connectivity that triggers digital transformation and transition that support that is supported by framework models, multi-level framework responsible for digitalization, change engagement model, and to apply on digital transforming and transition. So we can have innovation, innovation on marketing processes like marketing automation, like CRM, like Pardo, like Every, every tools that we have on our um, uh, so. objectives, using technolo technological control modeling solutions to minimize impacts or reduce waste, digital process waste. And nowadays we have too much digital process waste. So we have to mitigate that at least uh, with digital transformation, Paralleling with uh, changes processes <clears throat> applied to service continuous improvement on CRM and marketing automations to organizations, uh, public organizations, whatever it takes to mitigate and minimize waste on digital. So methodology, like I said, we have two models. One applies to digital competence acquisition, digital services and business models that comprehends on this full uh, item sustainability, participation, functionality, data privacy, like uh, our GPD. So uh, transparency, fairness, norms, and accountability. So uh, this is our, the DR principles uh, from Trier at all. So we have uh, support on this model and this model as well uh, from Albrecht at all. So he advokes that uh, we have to have uh, change engagement to manage human resources. So you have to, to have uh, senior leadership, organizational change culture climates, and to achieve change engagement to have positive change outcomes. So this is core and necessary to apply our study. So one model and another. So 
We have uh, digitalization responsible that encourages a responsible approach to digital uh, and addresses multiple levels of impact to mitigate a waste of digital. So digital competences <clears throat> and manage digital services. To support this, we have change engagement to apply human resources commitment, change process management, I need water, uh, manage resources and HR and financial resources that improve and uh, make the driving force to uh, apply this motivating leadership. So that is, so we have multi-level and change engagement to make an holistic approach that creates our future model response each engagement, okay? Methodology analysis, combining multi-level of the two frameworks. Uh, we have a quantitative data official reports issued by Eurostat in AM, EEPD. So we have a focus group in, in ongoing, but uh, we have not the, the data, uh, the qualitative data yeah. yet. <laughs> And uh, we have our results. So we have four constructors. We have digital intensity on of the company's priorities, strategies, and experiences. And with an objective, uh, 90%, Portugal is 51% digital intensity. So um, uh, on the on the S services, IT services uses in Portugal. 26% uh, uh, of companies adopted CRM. So integration levels in big companies use 31% versus 17% of small companies. That comprehends that from this data, 35% use EERPs. So E and, and in this 35%, we have 91% of big companies that use EERP versus 51% of small business companies. Like SAP, SAP for Anna is, is a ERP very powerful that costs a million of euros just to implement financial models. So, and we have we have uh, uh, several companies, including I, I, I made that uh, transformation in several companies and, and it's very hard. So not even all the companies have 1 million to spend in the ERP. So on the models of financial. So, um, the other constructor, digital skills in Portugal, I see training, very important and education. So in, 2000, in 2021, 2021, 23% uh, of companies from Portugal provided ICT training with a drop of a previous previous uh, What increased in ICT, uh, the specialties uh, by 3.6%, but is low on ICT graduates rated compared to EUA, UE <laughs> average, uh, of 33.9%. Uh, so digital clusters and innovation. Um, this, this provides community, communication activities of 22% and restoring computer and communication devices by 50%. So, third, third constructor, infrastructures and connectivity in Portugal. Impact, uh, this impact is crucial uh, for the companies. Um, Portugal investments, uh, was increased, um, an, I, an IT department budget is 50% uh, of the investment on this issue. The other 50% is the other things. <laughs> this is all, uh, if, if, you, if you can think that uh, an IT department has 2 million to spend, 1 million is to automation, to this one, this one big issue, okay? Um, Multi-level framework uh, for inclusive uh, digitalization in phases the importance of inclusive digitalization to avoid creating digital splitting. What is digital splitting? Is I do this, you do that. No, we do the same thing to achieve a, uh, a common objective. So results uh, to the public support uh, initiatives supported by public funds over 40% and the focus areas, digitalization of companies, collective products and companies. Limitations of, my, of our study. The sampling is obvious for, for all of us that the sampling is a limitation. 
a difficulty in measuring impact, it's the next step we, we're going to have is measuring the impact. Um, like the hatred, like the dark forces, well, the dark side of the forces <laughs> that my colleague has referred to in the first presentation. But um, that is, thank you. Well then, congratulations. <laughs> Amazing. It's a comment. So we have a comment. Comment, positive comment, not only that side, comment. Okay, positive comment. Very well, very updated. So congratulations for the, the authors. Uh, just a question is how you measure the engagement? Because it was uh, how you measure the engagement is um, is measured by uh, the focus group. Okay. So you you reunite uh, six people of six okay. different areas, and you ask them several questions okay. in a debate like this. Okay. And we we measure qualitatively. Uh, okay. Uh, the data. So okay. Because it's the next step engagement of also HR. <laughs> yes. Uh, adopting yeah. a, a IT. Uh, this IT, this IT. Maybe for the next one to try to uh, buy the survey. No, we would like to do. A, we would like to do a national survey. But before we need to refine the uh, the instrument with yes. some experts. Also because we are not sure that people we will really answer to us understood or answered to us you know openly because it seemed a very investigation on their own management approaches to that and we we had very recent data this week that only 2.2 of um, portuguese organization they don't care about us they don't care about us but yeah, maybe later on during the coffee break we can uh, we can yeah during the coffee break we speak more. What to respond? No, later on. In a break. Yeah, later on. Later on. Yeah. Last but not least. Yes, yeah. I know you are all waiting for the coffee break. We are waiting for the coffee break. Yes, of course. So, actually, the presentation uh, regards the role of associated business structures um, because, as I said many times, and those that know me, I am in the IF Market conferences since the beginning, and I entered the PhD studies because of the two businesses that I run. And because I, it's a lot of work to do in the actual field, and I saw some things that I didn't like in uh, the economic uh, life, and I said I want to go and research something more. What um, uh, did I do? Uh, I uh, focused my attention regarding the cooperation between companies, and especially when companies come together with an associative purpose to have a common uh, goal, and what do they do? to reach um, um, common, uh, uh, let's say, innovations, common uh, services and products that can be used not only by the companies, but also by the, the community. So we had an extensive research that started five years ago, and each year we added. Yes, mm -hmm. so it's, um, it's just to put here the work that we did, so it's a work in progress. And I was also honored to work with uh, Mark Peter here present, uh, my colleague from Switzerland. And uh, we had an extensive also that uh, article in Conjunct uh, Business and Management Journal. And each article actually presented theoretical aspects regarding the associative uh, aspects in the digital area. Then we focused on the digital innovation hubs, which is the new trend, let's say, regarding technology and everything else that has to be incorporated for a company to succeed in this digital um, um, age. And uh, now we are back to a semi-theoretical aspect of our associative um, uh, aspects because uh, these um, um, uh, structures uh, are not always and have been, let's say, um, um, forced by the pandemic period 
to get up to date with the digital um, platforms, digital software, and the transition that companies have been forced to do. So imagine each of you have a company, or maybe actually you have a company yes, that you run. For sure. Exactly. So the pandemic comes, and you see that you don't have a website, you don't have the social media updated, you don't have the uh, email uh, according, and you have so many digital problems. Then you start to call maybe some of your suppliers or some of your friends. What do you do? Can you help me? Can I have something that helps my digital communication? Some of the suppliers can help, of course. Maybe they are specialized. Some say, I don't care, do your own job. I have my own problems. But you have the other option, the associative business structures. So you can go to an association that has a specific specialization, or you can go to a digital innovation hub, or you can go to a chamber of commerce and say, I want to uh, develop more of my products in the digital uh, world. Help me, show me something that you can do. So in our research here, we actually uh, um, analyzed seven big elements regarding the digital ecosystem that companies um, have to embrace and also we established six checklists that could summarize what companies should do when they want to develop digitally, but together with the help of, of uh, uh, associative business structures. So according uh, to this uh, primary definition that has been given in 2005 about associations that are actually like a stakeholders network. So everyone has its own interest in a network, but they are organized to promote the common business interests of its members. The same is even today. We can come together in a, a specific association or cooperative uh, uh, project, and we have a common objective. But when we talk about digital transformation, each of us has something different in his mind. Maybe I want to develop my website to uh, sell online. But maybe you don't you don't care about the online selling. You want more to communicate with your clients because you offer consultancy services. So you want to develop more maybe the training aspects that you can offer online. So in this field, we have a specific objective that can be in common, but then we have <laughs> different priorities. So having this in mind, we uh, in a previous article, we developed a um, business ecosystem framework that actually explains, though we are so different in the way we approach the digital ecosystem, everyone is connected in a way. Because if you have a, a specific problem and you want to develop a, a, new, a, pro, a new product or service, you might do it on your own. Uh, at a certain point, you need help. Where do you find this help? So when you need this help, you can go to uh, uh, maybe a digital innovation hub, or maybe you can go to a business association, or you can um, ask maybe another uh, company that is very specific in offering digital uh, services and so on. So now the options are so many, and if you want to uh, approach this um, uh, uh, this direction, what do you do? So we created like um, 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 a path that will be presented um, uh, later in our second paper that we'll do. So it's a work in progress. Um, and we started with this main question. How can companies take better advantage of networking within the associative uh, business structures in the digital age, but also how can they be helped if they do not know how to act. So we did um, the theoretical um, research regarding the seven elements that um, a company could access or could have in mind when they uh, want to develop this digital uh, uh, transition uh, uh, aspects of their, uh, their potential. And we established this checklist that will be transformed further in um, a Canvas approach for the companies it's like giving the uh, giving the um, the solution in a small uh, uh, book uh, for you if you have uh, a digital uh, uh, proposal for uh, developing a new service or a different uh, product, you know what to do. So we did this checklist, and you each each step it's like your own and private consultant. 
regarding the digital approach. So from this point of view, uh, we um, uh, will uh, even further explain what all the digital uh, platforms um, can uh, can um, can represent for you. What will be the advantages? Because now there's a um, misunderstanding. Like when you have to go digital, you have to do everything all at once, if possible. It's not easy. But you have to see exactly what is the best option for you. Yes, you have to take everything into consideration. You have to see what is the best option to approach. But if you do not want to approach all uh, this uh, uh, communication uh, channels and uh, digital opportunities, um, you have to be very well prepared. Because if you do not choose, let's say, the e-commerce, this also can come with advantages and disadvantages. Uh, because now everything is online, so you have to see exactly what type of channel you you have to you have to choose. So this checklist uh, will be further um, um, developed um, in a, a, in a Canva for helping entrepreneurs and so on. So uh, we explain better what, what digital entrepreneurship means today, not only to develop a business that is fully dedicated to digital services, but also if you have classical products and classical services, how can you translate them on a digital level? So from this point of view, uh, we also want to help the associative business structures to understand that businesses do not want to work only at the classical level. So we cannot be uh, the same boring association that promotes the memberships and you have some benefits and that's it. No, you have to be very active also at the digital level. So from this point of view, this checklist will also be helpful for the uh, associative business structures uh, in uh, helping them promoting better their, uh, their approach on the market and also uh, the, the checklists to be improved uh, for the digital approach on the, on the market. As a future research, we will also um, uh, plan to do an online interview to actually see if the checklists proposed are according to the needs of the SMEs, to see exactly what are the things that we can improve. And if we have um, um, maybe uh, forgotten something, and to test the practical approaches on specific industries, because we can have the general Canva uh, framework and the checklist, but we, uh, we will see if this is available, for example, for the production companies, because I have also a production company, which is totally different as a digital approach from the other company that I run that offers services. So it's quite different. So we have to see if this uh, checklist and uh, Canva frameworks could be then developed maybe in two uh, versions of uh, approaching the, the, the digital transformation the journey of the companies. So this is it. Thank you. Maybe for a coffee break, but question. Yes, yes, yes. Please. Please first. <laughs> oh, don't worry. No, no, don't worry, Brown. In the feminist era, you don't say yes. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> So sorry. <laughs> uh, that the, the business associations are really uh, focused on helping the companies to to do digital transformation. Uh, or it's just uh, talking and uh, well, it's looking good to talk about yeah. and so on. What what do you mean? So my, country, my, main focus, my main focus regarding associations is digital innovation hubs, which is the new. A trend, the new era regarding the associative uh, potential of businesses. But yes, there are associations that uh, tend to remain at the traditional level that are very uh, out of date. And this also goes to the management level because the, the people managing it uh, say, well, we don't need that. But they, um, at least in Romania, they start to see the, the level of memberships uh, signing in for the, the association. So they are forced to do something. If they do not do something, they will disappear from the market because companies look for relevant representatives to promote their businesses. So if you are not a relevant association for me, why do I need to pay membership? Because I'm, I'm also an entrepreneur, so I think practically. And uh, I also took decisions regarding this approach. 
uh, some associations didn't do nothing. And I said, okay, I'm not paying the membership anymore. I will uh, go to somebody else. So yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Another Hello, good morning again. <laughs> I have a suggestion, of course. Oops. Uh, a scorecard is a perfect match for what you want to propose. Yeah. So you have already some items. You must have some uh, sequence order prioritization regarding this. So I, I make a scorecard, it is published in the European Business Review, and a completely different topic regarding the brand audit, okay? So, but you, I think that you can apply and test, you must to propose a, propose a scorecard and to validate it regarding different angles or industry. Product, service, B2B, and B2C, even in SME. Okay, so it's my proposal that I think that uh, it means the so on regarding the research. Yeah, you know that now that your proposal comes back to you. You have to link <laughs> me to your articles. So <laughs> we are all connected. Yes, Thank always. You. Okay. Thank you. Thank yes. you. I have a question. Yeah, just a comment. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, I also just have a comment. I really like the fact that you are linked with the practical work as well. You know, that it's not just theoretical, uh, but you have the practical background as well, so you can uh, like try it on your side. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah, Mark? Yes, it's a pity that teachers left. This is a success story for IC Mark Tech because Amalia started four years ago presenting the first paper. It, yeah, has now, yeah, the, uh, it has now reached 20 citations. So it's a good example to show how you can push your research agenda. And four years later, presenting the final paper, right? Uh, Semi-final. Semi-final paper, meaning <laughs> that the combined PhD dissertation is almost coming to an end. And that's a great story for IC Marketech seeing someone rise from so shy four years ago to now challenging everyone here in the room. Fantastic, well done. Yeah, thank you. And also thank you for helping out uh, and uh, being part of the research. Uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, but I got uh, a very important message to send to all of you. Uh, we have coffee break. Uh, <laughs> okay. yeah. But the coffee break, the coffee break is in the aula where we had also yesterday the coffee okay. break. And Thierry, yeah. no. Thierry asked us not to come with coffee or food here yeah. because this yeah. room is like presidential. Yes. Yeah. So he said we can enjoy coffee break downstairs, and then when we come back, please do not drink coffee or any food. Thank. This you. is the VIP. Yes. yes. Yeah. True. And I'm waiting yeah, you for the next session like that I will share. Like so uh, yeah. after the coffee break, we'll be here. Yeah. Thank you so much, Karina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, you want to answer? Nevertheless, I'm in my paper. I'm in the other building. Yes. I would like to grab a couple of